Something that I can bet pretty much every single person watching this video has done before is buy their own console with their own money for the first time. And something else I can pretty much guarantee is that when you did that, it felt pretty dang good. It almost served as a sort of rite of passage for being able to do what you want. I mean, back in the day, as kids, in order to get a new console, it was always begging somebody. If there was somebody we could ask for it, we would. Whether it be your parents, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, that one weird aunt and uncle you have who you barely ever saw, but for some reason when you did, they would buy you a really expensive gift and you didn't question it, you just took advantage. So to not have to worry about any of that crap and to just be like, I have the money and I am going to buy this console was an incredibly powerful feeling. And once you did have that console, it might as well have been like your firstborn child. The pride, the sheer amount of pride you had in owning that thing. Plus, if you were able to, you know, have income from whatever it was, then odds are you were going to continue to have at least some sort of income to be able to buy games for that sucker. Not that we would no longer accept games or consoles as gifts. If people wanted to still do that, by all means, we would accept it. But the point is, we now had more control over what, and perhaps more importantly, when we could get certain games. For example, say there's a game that just came out and it's brand new and you're excited about it, and you don't wanna have to wait until your next birthday or the holidays to potentially ask for it and then maybe get it. No, you want it right away. And so if you have your own money, you can do that. And a lot of times with consoles, the very first console you bought with your own money, that may be a console that you wouldn't have necessarily been able to get had you not bought it with your own money. For example, say you had a Sega Genesis back in the day and you wanted a Super Nintendo too. I was too young to do this myself, but say you wanted to then buy that Super Nintendo so that you could then have both of them. Because if it were up to just your parents, you would only ever have the Sega Genesis. There's no way they would have bought you both consoles. So if you have your own money to buy that second one, then it's a console you wouldn't have been able to have and that makes it extra special. Another scenario that I'm sure applies to some of you is that maybe you had a sibling who had a console in the house and they weren't very nice about sharing it. Now, for me, I was lucky. My two older sisters, they, they would play my video games, sure, but it was pretty clear that it was my console and I was the one playing it the overwhelming majority of the time. I never had to like ask for a turn or anything like that. But with some of you, I know you resented your sibling for hogging the crap out of the console. And so maybe you were finally able to buy that same console, sure, technically that console was already in the house, but now you had your very own and you didn't have to deal with any of that crap of trying to get a turn and dealing with them hogging the console. And while it's relevant, let me just throw this out there. Getting your own TV in your room, big deal. I mean, kids nowadays don't understand that back then there were way less TVs in the house than there are nowadays. I mean, back then it was common. Some houses only had the one TV. That was it. Okay, but when it comes to buying your own console for the first time, let's talk about where that money came from. Because to me, this is a huge part of the equation. And the way I look at it is like this. Basically, the harder earned that money was makes it all the more sweeter when you buy that console with that money. For example, I didn't get an allowance, but what I did get was 20 bucks every time I mowed our lawn. And we had a pretty big lawn too. It was one of those ones that looped all the way around the house and that took forever. And I typically didn't like doing it because you know, it was just a hassle. But if there was something I was motivated to buy, which let's be honest, was probably gonna be a video game. Yeah, I was out there mowing that lawn like a son of a gun, waiting for that grass to grow again so that I could mow it again. Heck, if I had been smart enough, I would have been out there with miracle Grow, sprinkling that stuff around to get that grass growing quicker. All right, so here's a question for you. If you get money as a gift and then use that money to buy your own console or game, does that count? Eh, I don't know. Technically, that's basically just like an extension of being given a gift. Sure, you can choose what you're going to buy yourself, but you didn't really do anything to earn that money besides just merely existing. 
But now it's time to talk about one of the other ways we could get money to buy our own stuff. And this one hurts for me personally because what it is is selling off our old games to buy new stuff. Yeah, there's some old games and consoles I had that I would give almost anything to get them back. And for example, I know a big one for me was I had the GameCube back when that was the current console and I also wanted to get an Xbox. So I had to sell off a bunch of my old games and stuff in order to get that Xbox. And I could give a crap about that Xbox now. I mean, yeah, I guess it would be nice to have it, but that thing broke anyways and Geez, thinking now back on it, what I gave up for that, oh, that sucks. But the original Xbox does have some good games and I really enjoyed it a lot, so I guess it wasn't a complete loss. Next, I wanna talk about what could make buying your first console with your own money even more special. And that would be getting a console at or around the launch of that console. Obviously, it's brand new, so that makes it special and having your own money to be able to buy it makes it even more special because maybe you wouldn't have been able to buy it if you didn't have that money of your own to do so. I feel like the Dreamcast would have been that console for a lot of people, especially since it kind of had that weird like borderline mid-generation release where uh, the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 were still considered current. Obviously, Sega had given up on the Saturn. That's why the Dreamcast came around. But there was a lot of buzz for the Dreamcast, and I would imagine quite a few people had saved up their own money to buy that, and it was cool to have it in addition to either a PlayStation 1 or a Nintendo 64 like a lot of people had. And that about does it for my thoughts, but of course I want to hear some of the stories you all have of the first console that you bought with your own money. Because I know that a lot of you have some very special stories about what happened, why it was so exciting for you. I'd love to hear all of that. So be sure to leave those comments down below and I will see ya in the next video. He's the red bird, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the red